right. Um, looking at your now your hormone levels, I think we need to put in the disclaimer. Some people are going to look at them and go, "Oh my God, this is not normal." It is quite a common theme, and it's um, if you don't mind me mentioning this to you, a lot of because a lot of your followers out there, um, Larry, are like myself, having had used anabolics in the past, performance iron junkies, you know, like loving to lift the weight, and the consequence of using anabolics to see peptide more often than not is actually a reduction of see peptide too soon because we do want that inflammatory response to happen, but increasing the, or utilizing the intake of this particular hormone along with another peptide, which I'm not going to name, <laughs> will actually allow your body to better handle the creatine kinase, which means quicker recovery time. Welcome, Larry, back again after last year's absolute awesome alteration of your biochemistry and the improvements of your weight, breaking through the, the boundaries that you had before. And here we are again to break through some new plateaus and get you to the hip, well, lifting heavier, but also weighing more with less body fat. So welcome, Larry. Pleasure, as always, to see you again. It's a pleasure to be back. Thanks for having me. Dr. Khan is our lovely, well, is my co-founder to Autonomy Coaching and our lovely physician on the call to guide us through your blood chemistry results today. Um, you and I had a conversation before about a few points of augmentation around peptide therapy, just to further promote your performance. Um, and I think just to, before we get into that, Larry, how underrated, in your opinion, if you look at other powerlifters and bodybuilders, how underrated is their use in, pe in peptides um, rather than, from, from my experience, if I can give you um, an understanding where I'm, where I'm coming from, when my experience in the past is that a lot of bodybuilders look for the more conventional performance enhancements, right? And through that conventional performance enhancements, they often get to the point where they're using far more than their body actually can ac utilize to get stronger to get you know bigger and what have you so having said that in the context of new biotech advancements and peptides i mean every single month there's a new advancement coming out with peptides which is just absolutely extraordinary particularly when it comes to improving the receptor health to utilizing the anabolics how underutilized are peptides currently in the field of powerlifting and bodybuilding in your opinion yeah uh, you're right you hit the nail on the head and the community, we like to use what's been tried and true. And peptides are new onto the scene. They're new to the community. I know they've been around for a very long time, but to the community, it's still like uncharted waters and not many have experience with it. Uh, on a regular basis, I meet athletes who speak to me about peptides and they've never used any peptide in their life, yet they've been using other supplements for, you know, for over a decade, for example. Um, so I think, uh, um, those waters are now being charted and myself included, even only in the last year have had any experience with peptides myself. Yeah. And, and in the last year that now you've been using peptides, have you noticed a massive difference in the increase of your strength and the increase of your muscle mass? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I've been walking around comfortably like five to seven kilograms heavier than, and leaner than I ever have before. I've always struggled to get over like the 115 to like 118 kilogram body mark, body weight mark. And now I can comfortably maintain 125 to 130 when I'm training uh, with a goal in mind, uh, which in the past was very, very difficult to maintain for over, you know, a couple of weeks or so. Yeah, well, that's, and, and that's extraordinary to see. And the reason why I wanted to bring to everybody's attention is that less is, can sometimes be more. Um, less of the nitric oxide and more of the oil and the water in the tank. And that's why I see peptides is they give the, your engine the better capacity to utilize the performance enhancement in a way in which it doesn't firstly create destruction to your health. And secondly, in a way in which it optimizes the actual effect that you're looking to get from things so it actually saves you money in the long run, you know, instead of actually just spunking out a lot of money on the conventional growth hormones and insulins and, and different forms of anabolics. And not to say that they don't work. Of course they do work. 
but I think it's about a, quit, a critical drop off point of inducing sensitivity in the body. Um, but having said that, peptides are also, you know, to be taken into consideration with the safety and efficiency. And this is the reason why we've done your bloods, you know. So um, I'm not going to divulge as to what we've given your recommendation because that's your private news. But we are going to go into your bloods now with Dr. Khan. And I'll give a little sneak hint here and there as to why we have highlighted certain points regarding peptide therapies, but not necessarily the therapy itself. So without further ado, Dr. Khan, I'm going to share my screen and over to you. Okay, so we're going to be going through um, your blood work. Um, and it says here we did this blood on the 11th of August. Okay, so we're going to start off with your, um, your glucose and your sugar control. And this is important because it tells us how your body is handling carbohydrates at the moment. And we luckily, um, we're very privileged to have a comparison. So we're looking at how improvements has happened over time in your bloods. So if you look at your fasting glucose, you've always had a relatively low fasting glucose. And this time you at least met the normal limit. So quite happy about that. Um, we don't want people's fasting glucose to also be too low because that's an indication that there's hypoglycemia and with that you can get a bit of brain fog um, and you can start feeling fatigued. So this is a very good result. Um, and then we have your hemoglobin A1C. Um, so HbA1c is a marker of how the body has controlled the sugar over the last six uh, three months. What happens is any um, highs in the sugar, it changes the way the cell looks um, and it actually alters the HbA1c and that can be measured. And yours is 5.3%, which is bang on target and has stayed pretty good. Um, your estimated average glucose then is 5.8, which is completely within the normal range. Your fasting insulin um, was slightly up uh, from your previous results. And the reason for that is because now that your glucose is normal, your insulin would have to be up. Um, before with your glucose being low, your insulin would have also been low. Um, your C-peptides are looking good. Um, it's 0.22, not a problem. C-peptide is basically just the breakoff product from insulin. It shows us whether the insulin is coming endogenously from the body or exogenous sources. And yours is looking quite good. Um, your HOMA A2 um, is slightly elevated. And I'm sure Justin will want to comment there. Yeah, Dr. Khan, so to go back also with regards to uh, the C-peptide as well, um, although we're not worried because we look at your, your uh, the way in which your body is disposing of glucose and utilizing glucose, it is quite a common theme. And it's and if you don't mind me mentioning this to you, a lot of, because a lot of your followers out there, um, Larry, are like myself, having had used anabolics in the past, performance iron junkies, you know, lo loving to lift the weight. And the consequence of using anabolics to C peptide more often than not is actually a reduction of C peptide along with other protein carriers as well. So for those of you out there that are listening in on this, um, when you look at your blood glucose, don't just look at what's currently happening, but look at what could be happening in the future as well. And this is one of the reasons as to why we've recommended a specific type of peptide for Larry's glucose utilization. Not that on the surface, it looks like anything sinus is happening. He's far from diabetes, but we want to keep it that way. Okay. And because we have the situation of performance enhancement, we're taking this into account. With the HOMA um, uh, percentage beta, this is about the sensitivity of beta cells, okay, in your periphery, sorry, in the pancreas itself, and how well they're able to release insulin. So this at the moment is slightly elevated, and we can even think, uh, consider and compare this to the low levels of C-peptides. So they're a little bit overwhelmed having to deal with breaking down the quantity of food, which is like six and a half thousand calories a day that you're eating. So we need to give you the right support um, to optimize your physiology to a super physiological state that's aligned with all your anabolic and catabolic efforts, right? With regards to the other performance enhancement. And that's something that needs to be taken into account is that when you improve your performance, it's not just about how well you can lift, but it's also how well you can improve how the organs are able to enzymically break down nutrients, calories, energies, and transfer that in to a better recovery process. Um, over back to you, Dr. Khan. Okay. Um, so going down, um, 
we're looking at next the ALT to AST ratios and Justin will also jump in on this one. So for me, I am not a big fan of ratios and I'll say that openly simply because um, a ratio is just that the way one number compares to another. So if one number is up and the other is down or if one number is, you know, um, stagnant and another number is stagnant at that level we won't really see changes in the ratio but justin um, does believe in this ratio particularly and i'm going to let him tell you why <laughs> so from a functional medicine perspective what we're looking at here is alanine and aspartate so alanine is an amino acid that you probably heard of beta alanine a lot of people take it before training gives you that little bit of a flushy feel have you taken beta alanine before larry yes and commonly find it your workouts and all did you and like it uh, I'm not a fan of it. No, I'm not a and fan of it. Why? This is why. This is the reason why. I, the reason why I asked you, I was like a little bit sneaky there, you see. <laughs> so alanine transports ammonia from the muscle tissue from our body back to the liver, which gets converted into acetylcholine and that gets transported back for energy use in the body. So it's a way of processing metabolic waste into more energy for the body. So the reason why I like this ratio uh, from a functional medicine perspective, it tells me as to how well your body is metabolizing waste as to how well it's able to produce energy or the amino acid that acts almost like a salt to the energy complex in your, in your mitochondrial metabolic systems or metabolic systems to help your mitochondria itself. So for me, it shows me here that we, we obviously have improved since last time around, which is fantastic but we can optimize the rates in your case of sulfation and glucuronidation, which will aid the ALT to AST ratio and giving you more energy and very, very importantly, less inflammation. Okay. And no, you train in like an absolute beast. So with all that training, inflammation is going to be, you know, the outcome of it. Um, so we really want to dial that down as much as we possibly can. Thanks, Dr. Khan. All right, next you've got your blood urea nitrogen and creatinine, and that's showing us how your kidneys are working. And your kidneys are working absolutely perfectly. You are allowed to have a slightly elevated creatinine because your body surface area is a bit larger. This calculation is done for a 1.73 square meter person. And um, you are obviously, because of your, your bodybuilding, you have more muscle, therefore more creatinine and your body surface area is slightly larger. So this is normal, um, and it's showing a good kidney function, and it's even improved. So though you've gained weight and you've gained more, uh, more muscle, um, your creatinine has not gone up um, further from the amounts we had, and that actually shows that the kidneys are functioning beautifully at the moment. As far as salts are concerned, um, your sodium and your potassium, which are very important for, um, you know, where the fluid is in the body. It's important for messaging. Um, it's impor important for muscle um, contraction. All of them are completely in the normal range. Um, your chloride as well. And then your carbon dioxide is slightly low. So the one thing we might be able to add is, I don't know how keen you are on meditation, but a bit of breath work in meditation will optimize that one for you. Um, your uric acid level and uric acid is a breakdown product of purines. Purines are found in, in um, all sorts of um, animal proteins. They're an amino acid um, group and they break down into uric acid. And you've previously had some elevated uric acid levels on our last uh, blood test. And this has completely come down to normal. The problem with uric acid is if high, it crystallizes in the joints um, and in the kidneys and it can form kidney stones. And it can also cause gout and inflammation of the joints. So yours is back down to normal and looking perfect. Creatinine kinase, um, we always expect yours to be slightly elevated because of the amount of muscle you have, and it's completely within the normal range here. With, with that, Dr. Dr. Collins, with that, what, what we're going to do, for the audience to know out there is, just to give a background, Dr. Khan, can you just give the audience a bit of a background information on creatine kinase, like how is it produced? Just so people get context of what I'm about to say. Okay, so creatinine kinase is produced in the muscle, and it's produced anytime there is any type of muscle, shall we say, damage or inflammation, okay? And I say that, and, and it's not that there's any problem with that, because when we exercise, 
there is inflammation and micro damage happening in the muscle. This releases the enzyme creatinine kinase. Um, but um, the levels that we see um, are not dangerous or harmful. The problem is if the creatinine kinase goes into the thousands, that it can go and um, it has to be excreted from the body through the kidneys and it overwhelms the kidneys. So if in high levels in the thousands, then it can be damaging to the kidneys. So you also see the acne kinase in damaging levels after car accidents. And um, in South Africa, we live in South Africa, if somebody's been shambocked, so if, if somebody's been beaten... It means whipped, Larry. It means whipped. <laughs> it means okay. whipped. Yeah. If you've been involved in a fight um, with a lot of uh, perhaps boxing, that type of damage to the muscles, you will see this enzyme being released. So with that being said, we're obviously going to try and increase your body's ability to handle metabolized creatine kinase in a more effective manner. So we, we'll see a little bit later on, there are specific hormone imbalances with certain uh, androgens that actually help to modulate what they call cytokines, which are pro-inflammatory agents in the body. And post-workout, within a particular time window, because we don't want to do it too soon, because we do want that inflammatory response to happen, but increasing the or utilizing the intake of this particular hormone, along with another peptide, which I'm not going to name, <laughs> will actually allow your body to better handle the creatine kinase, which means quicker recovery time, which means that you could be lifting more regularly, getting stronger, faster. Okay, and then we're looking at amylase and lipase, which shows us how your pancreas is functioning. Amylase is the enzyme that breaks down proteins. Lipase breaks down fats. Yours is perfect. So you've got a really strong and good pancreas going there. Um, then your total protein is looking good. Um, it was previously elevated. I'm wondering if you've decreased your protein intake in your diet, maybe, Larry? Uh, not at all. It's uh, increased anything <laughs> so your body's just handling it better and it's probably turning it into muscle that's why it's taking it out from blood so not bad at all globulin levels seven kilos. there's a seven kilos dr khan there's a huh? seven there's a there's seven, seven kilos, kilos meat. <laughs> okay albumin levels are good albumin is protein that keeps water within your vessels um, and it also carries everything around your body kind of like a little taxi um, and it's very important in our body, and yours is completely normal. Previously, it was low, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, globulin levels, which mainly comes from immunoglobulins, that's looking good. Um, so your immune system is functioning really well. Calcium is a little bit low, not abnormally low, but slightly low. So I think we need to maybe um, augment calcium, and perhaps um, the vitamin D might be a little bit low as well. I don't know if we took a vitamin D, but normally if the calcium is low, it's an indication that somebody might be vitamin D deficient. On the money there, Dr. Khan, on the money there. Phosphorus is looking good. Um, you've come down a bit, so you come back almost into the normal range for phosphorus. Um, and the others, as I said, ratios are not my thing. So those are ratios, but they're all looking slightly better. Ceruloplasmin is a bit low, which indicates that you're not managing to create the... Um, it's this is the little taxi that carries copper around your body. Um, and we might need to augment that with a particular peptide. We're not going to say which one, but I think you probably do. <laughs> Justin will know what I'm saying you need. Yeah. We, don't, we can't give away Larry's secrets. You know, he yeah. paid a lot of money for this, guys. Okay. If he wants to, he can. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> or you guys can start with autonomic coaching and get the secrets for yourself tailored for your needs, right? Uh, I, yes. Larry, I, I could have said better words myself. <laughs> it is tailored. Um, your zinc is a bit low as well, so I'd supplement the zinc, please, Justin. Most okay. certainly. Yep. Alkaline phosphatase, which is obviously from bone turnover and also from liver, is looking good, showing no obstruction. ALT and AST, um, although still slightly raised, is looking much better. So um, I'm quite happy with the improvement in the liver. I would probably continue with some liver support, um, vitamin C, some glutathione, um, just to continue to support the liver because the liver is um, having to take on all of those calories and contain with all the calories that are going through it um, together with the amount of protein that's going into the system. So we just want to support it to keep it healthy. 
But I must, I must commend you, Larry. I've seen a lot of guys that have been athletes uh, that have used performance enhancement and they don't have these AST, ALT levels, right? Like the lowest I've ever seen, especially a person of your caliber, has had like in the 70s. So for you to have 35 and 32 is phenomenal. All right, so can you, I can really commend you on the good job that you've done uh, to get those levels on, on an optimal point or a more optimal point from what they were before. So good job, really, really good job. That's all thanks to your um, help. Also looking at the obstructive enzymes um, in the liver, um, which would show us whether uh, you might have any sort of obstruction from um, fatty deposition in the liver or perhaps gallstones or anything like that. There's nothing of that sort, um, a pristine um, liver going on here. Um, iron studies, we don't have a new total iron, but we do have a ferritin. Um, and that shows us the iron stores, and yours is looking completely normal. We don't want elevated uh, ferritin levels to be too high. That can happen when there's an infection, an acute inflammation, or it can also happen if somebody's putting too much iron into their system. That iron loves to go and deposit in the pancreas, it deposits in the heart, deposits in the liver, and can cause damage there. So yours is looking good. You previously had slight elevation, but now you're back in the normal range. Um, cholesterol. The total cholesterol is four, which I mean is great. Any number under five, um, if we have risk factors, um, we want to be under four. If we have, so if we have the risk factors under four, if we're a healthy individual, we want to be under five and yours is four, looking good. Um, low density lipoprotein, um, which is the bad cholesterol has come down significantly. Um, the good cholesterol, is the only one where I wish we could have gotten a little bit higher. I see we've been on the trend of increasing our good cholesterol, but we haven't yet got there. So augmenting the diet in the healthy fats, where we still need to get there, perhaps some avocado, some fish oil, or a bit more olive oil, those types of things, just to help our good cholesterol get up. Historically as well, guys, just to remember one thing is that, yes, it's very important to put in plant-based fats, have a good source of omega-3, and also monounsaturated fats for that matter as well. But um, anybody that's using performance enhancement, um, it's very difficult to get the HDL level up, okay? And there's a reason for that as well, particularly if you're using a certain amount, because HDL is utilized for the production of hormones, okay? So it's a precursor form of the, a carrier for the cholesterol that produces more hormones. So when the body has a certain perception of hormones, it's not gonna want to create more of it. So the way in which we can get around this is an actual specific peptide, not going to mention it, uh, that we can use, particularly in situations of performance enhancement, to increase the HDL. Now, this is given what Dr. Khan said about you following a healthy diet and the incorporation of the peptide. You can't just take the peptide and hope your HDL goes up on its own. It doesn't work that way. But with a peptide in combination with healthy fats, you can have a better chance to get this HDL up where it needs to be. That being said, I'm actually quite proud of Larry because people who use performance enhan enhancements normally have a much worse total cholesterol. So this is, you know, just um, a, a testament to the fact that his diet is really clean. Mm, very much so. Okay. Um, all right, thyroid function. Um, TSH is sitting within normal. T4 slightly elevated, but nothing to worry about at the moment. Um, T3 within the normal range. So I'm quite happy with this thyroid function. I don't think we need to augment anything there. Uh, okay, reverse T3 has stayed basically flat. HCRP, which is our inflammatory marker, shows a mild elevation. So there might be a little bit of inflammation still ongoing in the turnover of the body. Um, but the ESR is completely normal, meaning that the, um, there's not too much going on from that inflammatory perspective that we need to worry about. We did not do a homocysteine level this time. The vitamin D is extremely low, as I was expecting from the calcium. We need to augment vitamin D. Um, our vitamin B12 levels are looking good. Vitamin C is looking good. I'd really love to continue that vitamin C because we want to keep the, um, the liver healthy um, and we want to keep the immune system healthy. Um, the got, FSA and the LH are completely flat. IVs coming there. Dr. Khan, we've got weekly IVs coming there for Larry's uh, glutathione, vitamin C, uh, uh, amongst a few other B vitamins and amino acid concoction. How's it going, Larry? Have you, been man have you managed to sort that out in Dubai now? I know you did a session out in New York. 
Uh, yes, I haven't done one since the return to Dubai, but uh, I've done a couple in New York. Uh, that's probably why it's reflecting here in the report. Uh, this report was done, uh, I think, a week or two ago, right? So, yeah, but um, I'm looking to get started with the IV, uh, well, this weekend, actually. Okay, fantastic. Uh, we'll just do that every, even if it's just every alternate week, uh, I think it would be, be a good idea if you do it every week, considering the volume of training that you're involved in. But even if it were to be just every alternate week, it would make a massive difference. Um, and that IV concoction is secret property once again. But I do want to say, though, that um, I know this is probably not on the top of your mind, but the concoction that we're giving you is going to give you glowing skin. Okay, I do. <laughs> I do it's like my skin glow. glow. <laughs> <laughs> I know you glow from the inside and you glow from the muscle, but you'll be able to glow from the outside too. Will I be glow in the dark? <laughs> no, no, you're not turning yellow. Don't. <laughs> okay, okay, we're not good. giving you jaundice, I promise you. <laughs> the yellow would be a bad letter, so we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Um, looking at your now, your hormone levels. I think we need to put in the disclaimer. Some people are going to look at them and go, oh my God, this is not normal. No, it's not meant to be normal because he's using performance enhancers. So what's happening is when you look at your FSH and your LH, you are expecting these to be at a lower level. You are expecting the testosterone to be in the higher level. Um, you are expecting the sex hormone binding globulin to decrease because the testosterone is in a higher level. So these are completely normal for where you are and for your goals. Um, and I think that's enough said about these. I don't think we need to comment on them. We know why they are where they are. They're not in dangerous levels. They're at the level where you'd be building without danger. Just with that, though, the one thing, Dr. Khan, uh, with regards to the estradiol levels being increased, um, just going back to what we saw before with the ALT-AST ratio, uh, one of the pathways that helps to metabolize um, estrogen metabolites or unwanted estrogen metabolites, you, so you have E2, E4, and E16 metabolites, we don't really want a huge amount of E4 and E16 because they obviously can instigate unwanted effects like gynecomastia, cancerous cell growth, and so on. Um, so this particular pathway called glucuronidation, uh, we're going to utilize a specific supplement to aid its, assess, uh, its ability to help your body metabolize excessive estrogen. And this will also help with water retention, will help with your energy levels as well. So just, just a little caveat here with regards to what we saw before. And what we're seeing now here with the elevated estrogen levels. Okay. All right. Looking at your prolactin levels, there is a slight elevation, but nothing to be worried about. Not in the dangerous levels at all. Um, IGF-1, which looks at growth hormone, completely normal. Cortisol levels back down to normal. So you've managed to control your stress levels very well. Parathyroid hormone in the normal level. Um, going down... You're looking at the rest of the blood, full blood count, hemoglobin looking good. Um, we expect yours to be slightly elevated, being a bodybuilder, needing more hemoglobin to feed all those muscle of you, muscles of yours. There's no loss here. There's no evidence of any bleeds from anywhere. Um, mean cell volume, slightly elevated. Um, I would probably recommend we just add a bit of folate in. Um, to our supplementation here. I think it's going to be good for him. Um, otherwise, platelet levels, normal, um, neutrophils, which is the, the white blood cells that fight infections together with lymphocytes and monocytes, all normal. Eosinophil count now down to normal. So any, um, you know, gut allergies and, uh, you know, parasites or anything like that, none whatsoever in your system. They're looking beautiful. Um, the cell levels are really looking good. So, from overall, what I can tell from this is there's a few things we can still tweak, but by and large, you are biohacked to the max. Yeah, you've improved a hell of a lot. You tell you from when you started with us, and I'm so happy to as well, Dr. Khan, I don't know about you, but I'm looking at here at the parathyroid hormone where it was you know, when you started. And this is so good to see it shift into the right direction. This is going to mean that you're going to be able to just, you know, be in the powerlifting scene for a lot longer. Um, you know, the outcome of, uh, I'm not going to mention names, but a very well-known Mr. Olympia that's unfortunately now wheelchair bound um, is often because of excessive bone mineral turnover and the bone, and bone density becoming more frail. 
So we really want to keep this point um, in the optimal range so that your bone density doesn't suffer from all the efforts that you're putting into all the heavy lifting. So I'm really happy to see this, Larry. This is a, it's a big win uh, for, the, for the future and the longevity of your career. Excellent. Excellent. Very happy to hear. Very happy to see this. Do you have any questions, Larry? Uh, yes, exactly what's contributing to the parathyroid, parathyroid um, improving. Can we reveal that on this, uh, or is that a secret? <laughs> <laughs> no, we can. We can definitely. It's a multitude of factors. Um, first and foremost, it is, if we look at your, your thyroid is operating a lot better. And you must remember a lot of the metabolic um, hormones and associated systems will have an impact on the parathyroids too. So what the parathyroids do, uh, first and foremost, Dr. Khan, do you want to explain just what the parathyroids do to the audience, just so they get a context as to why I'm associating metabolic hormones with the parathyroid hormones? So the parathyroids are four glands that sit attached to the butterfly-looking gland called your thyroid. Um, and what they do is they're very important for, um, basically they modulate your bone. And the way they modulate your bone is by modulation of calcium and phosphorus deposition. So when your body is low in calcium, you will secrete more parathyroid hormone. This will then go and basically tell the body, I need calcium. What will that do? It will go to your bones and pull the calcium out of your bones and will also work in your kidneys to increase the reabsorption from calcium from your tubules. So when the parathyroid hormones are up, if they've been up for a long time, what you get is brittle bones. Okay, so you don't want your parathyroids to be up. They're very protective if you're low in calcium. Um, you know, your body also doesn't want to be low in calcium. You'll get problems with your muscles. Um, but on the other hand, prolonged long-term uh, parathyroid hormone problems um, are quite a problem for the body because that would be exactly how you get brittle bones, osteoporosis, um, renal osteodystrophy, and um, then you will start having fractures in your bones. So the reason yours has improved is actually because you, um, your diet must be very clean, enough calcium in, um, and you've been modulating that as well as the vitamin D that you were taking. So those supplements help you to, uh, once you've sorted out your calcium level in your blood and you're keeping your calcium level at a good level, you won't make as much parathyroid hormone because you don't need it as much. Also, you must remember, Larry, um, calcium is very much so needed in the nervous system. Okay, so when your nervous system is overwhelmed sympathetically, which means overwhelmed with excessive amounts of stress, it's going to require more calcium in order to facilitate that stress. So what we've done by opting to improve the functionality of your liver, opting to improve the functionality of your red blood cells, and also if you look at the white blood cells and the differentials between them all, we've reduced the quantity of stress that your physiology is currently going through. And with that, when you're exercising, you're, not now, only trying, you're now able to focus on putting effort and stress into exercise, not just the effort and stress of exercise, as well as all the other insults that were going on in your body, from your liver to your pancreas to your to your immune system being inflamed with the high high amounts of eosinophil counts that we had before, so we've taken out all these other factors that can induce stress to the nervous system, and we've allowed you the opportunity to direct your efforts to lifting weights without overwhelming your efforts with excessive stress from environmental factors, and this plays a huge role into the regulation of calcium use in the body as well, along with the utilization of cofactors like zinc and vitamin D as well. Okay. Okay. Understood. Healthy liver means healthy calcium use because liver is a power organ to produce energy as well as to detoxify toxins and the metabolites of energy. So, you know, I cannot emphasize uh, more so for anybody that's, you know, going into any type of competitive sport that's pushing themselves, regardless if they are assisted or not assisted, to really look after the state of the kidneys and their liver. Um, you know, those are two big, or I mean, obviously all the organs are important, but those two are really going to give you the opportunity to have better balance you know, along the hierarchy of physiology. So really take good care of them. Absolutely. Okay. Any other questions, Larry? Uh, not at this moment, but you know, uh, I'll remind you guys with questions later on. <laughs> you just pop us a, a question on WhatsApp thing. Um, we do have a WhatsApp thread, which the two of us together with, um, our, our third musketeer, Marinus, um, we're all on WhatsApp with each of our patients individually so they can ask us questions directly and um, it stays confidential. 
All right. And guys, everyone watching is want to give a shout out to these guys here because anytime I have a question, they always get back to me within minutes. Um, and that I think is a great, just great service. So thank you guys for that. Larry, I really need, waiting for an answer. It's only, been, it's only a pleasure to help you. You know, it's, it's lovely to see. You know, one of the reasons why I absolutely love Dr. Khan as my sister and I love helping you as an athlete is because you guys share something in common and that's passion for what you do. And so it gives us only an absolute honor to be able to help people with passion. Talking about that as well, I know one of your passions is actually to help your audience and to getting themselves to being stronger and better and improving on their performance. And before we end, we actually have a little bit of an offering um, to your audience. Larry, would you like to uh, just give them a little bit of information on what we're going to be doing? Uh, yes, absolutely. So we will be choosing 10 people who are watching this video to participate with autonomic coaching. And I will also be on the call um, just to kind of be more intimate with you guys. And if you have any questions for me, my team with autonomic and how my transformation process has been going so far, uh, I'll be happy to be on the call with you guys. So this is going to be um, valid for all 10 of the people who will be participating. And Justin, do you want to like maybe um, sure. clear up any questions they may have? about this, how exactly this is going to work? Most certainly, most certainly. So it's going to be the first 10 inquiries that come through via email and the email address, we'll post it up on the YouTube link as well for when it goes out to everybody. But the email address is info at autonomiccoaching.com. Remember it's two C's, autonomic and another C for coaching. Um, so the first 10 inquiries that come through, you guys are going to get a free blood test because okay? so you're not going to pay for your bloods, free analysis, follow-up call with Dr. Khan and myself and with Larry. And in that call, anything regarding, you know, your limitations on training, Larry is going to be there. It's like, just hear what you've been doing, give you a few bit of tips and everything that's been limiting you with by your biochemistry, you're going to be able to put those two pieces of the puzzle together, giving you a lot of information to take home to improve on your performance and just, you know, aspire towards Larry's greatness. Although, I do feel he is an alien visiting us from, you know, Krypton. But nonetheless, Superman is here to help us. And hopefully we can all make you guys a bit more superhuman along the process as well. So, yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal experience. And Dr. Khan and I are here to help you all along the way to being better and being a part of the team personal record and breaking some more records for more people of other people's personal endeavors as well. All right. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Larry. Dr. Khan, thank you so much for being my partner in health. Hmm? Uh, say thank you so much for being my partner in health. And to the audience, thank you. And to the audience out there, um, yeah, just keep on lifting healthily. There's nothing, nothing wrong in having your personal decisions. However, there's always something wrong in doing them without conscious understanding of the outcome and what your decisions are. So if you want to, if you want to performance enhance or not, regardless of the situation, look into your health, make sure that you're around until you're 60, 70, rather than having to retire in your 40s because you can't manage the pain, which unnecessarily manifests itself. So live healthy, live a long life, stay strong. And from us here at Autonomic Coaching, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Justin.